I know we have our own technical challenges between point A to point B. You think? And Paul was actually amazed that his computer booted up correctly this morning <laughs> and everything is good. <laughs> well, I'm amazed that all the team settings didn't change. But here's a, There was another set of computers this morning that did not boot up correctly. And if you yeah. headed to the airport, you might want to check your flight status because apparently there's a hiccup with the FAA and their, whatever system they use to route flighting and, and other things uh, just decided to take the day off and um, all flights yeah. are grounded until about 9 a.m. But it looks like they're coming back online. But... Oh, are they? Oh, good. I was going to say 9 a.m. if we're lucky. But um, even then, like even let's I think they said they they turn, they allowed Atlanta and I think like Newark or one of the large New York airports to start taking off again. But oh, okay. several Good. hours of planes not taking off. Oh, there's nothing better. You, you, know? you can't just you can't just grease that through the system. Like you can't <laughs> flush an update. Like <laughs> well, we should say by the way, the, the good news is is apparently it's not a cyber attack, right? No, it's, it's just. A, I'm sure it was, you know the Commodore 64 is around the FAA, you know, overheated or something. But <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I said to my wife, this escalated while I was reading the paper. The, the New York Times had a headline about how there were delays, and then I switched over to the Washington Post, and it was like, oh my, every flight is grounded. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like, wait, what? And then uh, I saw something in my feed that was like literally three minutes old, and it kind of, it said, look, it's not a cyber attack, blah, 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 you know, and it's like, oh boy. You know, that's that's the the morning you want to wake up to. Thank God we weren't flying today. Mm, oof, yeah. Which, mm. yep. Yeah. There's somebody at the FAA having a real, well, actually probably multiple people now, having a real stressful morning. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, where's that old guy that knows how to fix this thing when the weird thing <laughs> exactly. happens that nobody knows what's going on? We need on? a COBOL programmer stat. Yeah. So, there you go. You got that, that floating around. Yeah. Good stuff. Hmm. What else is going on? I don't know. I got to go lie to Pete or lie to one specific person here in about 29 minutes. Paul knows where I'm Excuse headed. Me. I'm headed to the dentist. <laughs> and they're going to be like, you're flossing daily, right? It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Daily. Hourly, even. I do it after lunch every day. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll, be they'll believe me as my gums just whatever. <laughs> oh, boy. It's been a busy week for me. Yeah, there's also Microsoft reportedly canceled the Surface Duo 3, but they're working on it. This is like the classic Microsoft thing. They've yeah. got a thing, they've got a style, they've got a design, they're canceling it. And supposedly working on something that's going to be more traditional. Not even traditional, that's the wrong word. Just well, truly foldable, uh, not two screens I'm with a hinge. I, I may write about this. This is a beautiful I told you so moment for me. Um, I try not to be bitter about those things, but... You know, when they first announced this thing, I was like, everyone's doing folding displays. What? what why on earth would anyone want a, a border in the middle of the two screens? And um, I almost don't want to articulate this, but let me throw something by you because you will appreciate the parallels between this and HoloLens. Do you think, because of this Microsoft, it's not even a culture thing. It's like a, it's not, it's not a tradition because it's not on purpose, but... Everyone knows that supposedly it takes Microsoft three tries to get everything right. Mm -hmm. Right? There's so many examples of this. Windows, Surface, you know, whatever. Do you think because of that, there is this hesitation to release a V3 of a product if it's not mm. that leap, right? Mm. <laughs> like, right? I know. I mean, I, they may not even realize they're doing it. I may be making it up, right? Yeah. This, is, this is conspiracy theory territory, but... You know, if they released a third version of Surface Duo with a folding screen, maybe the collective response, explicit or implicit, it just it may have been in the back of people's minds, it may have been out front, I don't know, would have been, yep, they blew it. They couldn't get it right in three, you know? Yeah. And so they're like, okay, okay, let's re let's step back. I'm just, just a, you know, just an idea in my mental brain. It's not, I mean... Anybody who's right? followed this stuff long enough kind of knows that you wait for the third one because that's just what it is. And a lot, I mean, look, it's not perfect. I, I, I think uh, we are uh, in our chimp brains, you know, we're like, oh, 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 it makes sense. You know, but there are probably as many examples of products that got, Microsoft products that got it right on V1 or V2 or V4 or whatever. You know, like I, it's, 
you know, you, you, you see those patterns and they become reality. Uh, but, but, but I think the thing that makes what I said possibly true is that is how people work. And so there is, whether they know they're doing it or not, when it gets to V3 of a product that hasn't done too well in the, pro in the market and the people making it, or maybe even management, whatever thinks that, look, we, we've got to get this right. This, this could be big for us. Maybe there's a little more of an imperative to get it right on that third try, you know, because of that same reason, right? So it kind of makes the fantastical real <laughs> because we're all wired the same way, you know? I don't want to think too deeply about this. I'm sorry. It's like 8.30 in the morning. But that's that's the thing that flashed through my brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a, that and then the stroke. So <laughs> anyway, that's, that's where I'm at. <clears throat> anyway, look, this is what they should – look – Maybe I should say, I, I you say that is what they should have done, right? It's yeah. sort of like saying Windows 11 22H2 is the one they should have released first, right? That's cute. But <clears throat> doing that takes time, and you want to get to market for particular reasons, whatever. <clears throat> um, but maybe it's the one that we should all consider. And I never thought folding made a lot of sense. <clears throat> Sorry, um, two screens made a lot of sense, dual screens. Mm -hmm. Um, a folding screen is a different thing. You know, this is the, the, the notion that your brain works better with two separate displays somehow is nonsense. We, this is well understood. And I know there are people with dual display, you know, desktop setups and that, you know, they're masters of the universe and everything. I mean, you're probably one of them. And, and like, that's fine. Like we, that's not really what I mean, but to, to claim somehow that this separation makes your brain work better and you get more creative and you know we, we know this is not true it's really there's a lot of distraction that comes with that kind of thing but a folding display is a completely different animal because it's always one display whether it's the outside display or using it like a phone mm -hmm. or you open it up and you get kind of a mini tablet effect right and that's that's why the dream that dream we have of this one device that could do two things in this case is so compelling because it could work <laughs> you know it it kind of passes the test um, a, a thing where you fold it and it's like, it just, no, no, Th these will be, these will make parade magazine lists of, you won't believe we had this tech in the past. You know, it's, it's like the thing where you show a cassette tape and a pencil mm -hmm. to a child and you're like, how are these two things related? And they're like, what are you talking about? And a, what is that thing on the left? You know, that's where the folding display, uh, phone or whatever you want to call it. It's going to look like to someone from 20 years or another. Like, what's the, how quaint. How silly, you know. See, the, the problem here, Paul, mm -hmm. is that let's say Microsoft does go down this route. Yep. And it doesn't sound like they're shipping it this year. Oh, okay. Yep. By the time they ship this thing, other other entrants, other players, Samsung, there's ton, LG, tons of these companies have these things now. Yeah. They're going up against an established base rather than <laughs> yeah. well, Gen 1. So. Right. So to that, I would just say a couple things. First of all, the Microsoft proposition in the productivity space is always there, you know. So a Microsoft device that is a Microsoft 365 device that could make sense in some other form factor than two screens is still compelling to organizations that mm -hmm. want to roll it out and manage it, you know, yada, yada, yada. So there's always kind of that. Um, but it's not like Microsoft is inventing their own folding display technology, right? I didn't read right. the original report yet, but they're going to use Samsung displays, right? Or some other display that's of similar quality. So what they're really doing is benefiting from time. Um, it reminds me, I just wrote this about Windows 7 essentially being Service Pack 3 of Windows Vista, right? If you were to list out the problems with Windows Vista, Microsoft solved some of the problems, actually in Service Packs, but also in Windows 7, which is around componentization and performance and all that kind of stuff. The other problems, which were drivers, or there were too many computers in the world that just couldn't display arrow, glass, right? Mm -hmm. We're solved by time, right? Intel yep. released an integrated chipset for graphics that was included with all of their processors that could render render Aero glass. So as people upgraded their computers, even the littlest computers, you know, the lowliest computers could run glass, right? So that happened, right? Time goes by, you know? So Microsoft had a, Microsoft had a choice, right? They could have released a folding display device, which would have been incredibly more expensive and more liable to have problems. And they would have had to support that and repair them and replace them. Or they could have done what they did, or they could have done nothing, right? So 
I think from Microsoft's point of view, it was like better to put out kind of a, I don't want to call it half ass, but a, not what they really wanted, but a, a step toward that direction because just to get, to keep it in people's mind, like we do these things. There's um, the other thing too about the duo that we can't mm -hmm. forget is that Microsoft canceled the Neo. And so they had to put something up because if the headlines yeah. would have been Microsoft holds press event, shows off multiple products, doesn't ship <laughs> yeah. half well, of them. Uh, Panos Panay, to his credit, uh, and this is a guy I'm not 100% sure about <laughs> in either way, but I will say, to his credit, uh, voiced some skepticism. He actually said it that I remember. He's like, I I didn't want to talk about this stuff yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, and I think they wanted something exciting, you know, whatever. We've also talked about this notion of Microsoft adopting Android a little more broadly and having different classes of devices, right, that run Android in our Microsoft 365 devices that have Microsoft's software services integration and Microsoft's UI kind of built in, right? So a phone that runs Android that looks like Windows 11, a tablet that does the same, a folding display mini tablet slash phone that does the same becomes a family of devices. And I think this is a distinct possibility. And I, you know, I mean, if, in the sense that Surface is, you know, successful, if it is, I don't even know how you quantify that, but... Um, there's no re if, if Surface makes sense to Microsoft as it is today, there's no reason that the addition of those devices can't make as much sense and maybe more sense because they target a, uh, a bigger market, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, even, even if they're only a single digit percentage of usage, it still has the potential to be the best selling family of Surface products. Maybe. Maybe. I know. I, maybe. I, I should qualify everything I'm saying. I'm not saying I believe this, you know, perfectly, but. It's a possibility. And it's a possibility we'll be back tomorrow because I got to run to the dentist. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs>